All right. I watched the most hated film in America. Did you see Run, Hide, Fight? Yes, I ended up. You actually saw it? I actually it? did. Oh, I my did God. not, you know, I, I probably would not have seen it. Uh, but I figured, you know, since we were talking about it, it would be good if I, like, saw it, too, just so, like, I could, you know, come from a place of, like, actually having seen the movie and everything like that. Sure. But, um, what did you think? Do you think it's a bad movie? I don't think it's a badly made movie. I definitely disagreed with what it was trying to do. But it was... I was... Once again, having not known much about it going into it, I, I was expecting something that was much more poorly made, and I I was expecting absolute garbage, and it wasn't that. But I did, I I do understand why there is uh, definitely some some pushback on it and everything. So just real quickly, this is uh, a movie that is basically about a school shooting, and a high school senior girl is kind of a female John Mc, John McClain version of, of Die Hard, right? So it's kind of like a, it's a high school school shooter, female John McClain Die Hard. That's basically kind of die the hard in high school, overall. You know. Right. Yeah. So I think four, you know, four, it's towards the end of the year of a high school, se- uh, high school year. Four kids have this very elaborate plan to take over the school, do a school shooting, uh, they kill a bunch of kids. They live stream everything on Instagram Live and Facebook Live. And they're very much about garnering attention. And they want to kind of become famous. And they want the world to know how angry they are and all this stuff. And she basically uh, played by uh, Zoe Hull. I'd never seen her or anything. I think she's on Pretty Little Liars. or She's she's on some teen girl show that's very popular, apparently. Um, but she, uh, she was great. Yeah. I think yeah, she was she great. She was good. I think... The guy who plays the main villain killer kid, the kid that's in charge, um, is played by the, uh, Eli Brown, and she is Zoe Hall. Uh, that's her character. Isabella May is the actress. They were great. The two leads were great. I honestly, I have no complaints. Thomas Jane is in it, re- weirdly enough. He's kind of barely in it, so it's hard. Yeah, to really you got Thomas but. Jane and Rada Mitchell and Treat Williams as your mm-hmm. famous people to, like, you know... Uh, oh, and uh, who was there? Was somebody else that was oh Barbara Crampton's in it too, randomly enough too, uh, mm. from uh, you know Reanimator and all those '80s uh, slasher movies and everything. Basically, she kind of, you know, not to I don't want to get into spoilers and how it ends and all that stuff, but basically, she much like in Die Hard, she kind of makes her way and starts kind of picking off the terrorists and picking off the uh, the school shooters one by one as they're kind of going through and. It's done kind of in fun, elaborate ways or whatever. But, uh, you know, it, it kind of made it, it, it's more interesting. I think the, the backstory of this um, and I mean, it, this movie is hated. I think it's is it is it at 13 percent on Rotten Tomatoes or something? I, I, don't I, know. I haven't checked. But yeah. yeah, it's it's bad. So people are they hate that this movie kind of got made. They hate the subject matter, mm-hmm. which is weird to me. Like we, we watch kids get killed in movies all the time. So I don't understand I mean, in you know, and, and they did. I mean, Scream. They, there's a million horror movies where all everyone who get killed. I mean, we've been watching it for 50 years. We've been watching like young people kind of get killed for 50 years on in movies. So I, I don't know why this is weird and egregious and tasteless and classless and, uh, you know. Uh, but all the reviews are kind of like, how dare you, sir? How dare you? Well, how dare you make a movie? And I just I found it like a weird. I don't, I don't know why not. I don't I don't know why this is some sacred topic that. You kind of can't do well. The the one thing because you know that's hard. You know, the, this is what the movie is kind of asking. It's it's kind of almost like goading you to be like you know like yeah that's right we're we're doing this we're showing you this and um, that's the like like I said it's not this is really where um, how you do things really I think matters especially when you're dealing with such a touchy subject because it's basically you know school shootings are a very somber subject and uh this handles like you know decently like uh, okay this the 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 visual language of this movie is something akin to starts out something akin to say elephant which was another school shooting movie or say even something like green room where it tries to kind of mm-hmm. highlight the realism like kind of tries to do a 
decent amount of time to establish who these characters are and what they're doing and like little groundwork things like oh hey it's it's senior prank day so you have this tension building up of like kids popping into classes all day and like popping balloons and you know something bad's going to happen and that's all well and good but the when you get into the conceit oh hey it's die hard in a school shooting scenario the thing is it's like die hard or say like even if you want to compare it to something that's more uh, similar to this this plot line, so something like, say, Class of 1999, or uh, even, like, I don't know, Red Dawn or something like that, where it's kind of a fantasy wish fulfillment kind of thing where it's like, oh, we have these bad guys that we can dispatch, and, you know, it's all about you have a character that you can root for, that, and you have these one-sided, cartoonishly bad guys that you can take down and everything like that, so... It does execute that idea well, and it's not... I did like some of the techniques that they used in it, but the the gratuity of showing the kids when it finally starts showing kids getting killed and everything like that, it, it did feel kind of exploitative in the sense that, like, I didn't like how the main bad guy, the kid that's, like, in charge of all the school shooters, is basically mm-hmm. Hans Gruber. You know what I mean? Like, that's the thing, is, like, you're... You're trying to lay the groundwork so early on, like, hey, this is realistic, this is real life, and everything like that, and then you go full diehard, well, what you're telling me is that you can do this too, you know what I mean? Which is a little, Hmm. and it's kind of hard, that's the hard thing too, is like, this goes into so much other stuff, and it's hard to like, get into it without editorializing and everything like that too, but it's also like, one of those things, like, if you're telling me... If you start out saying this is this is essentially real, and then you kind of turn it into Die Hard, it feels like I don't know. It, it's like encouraging, you know, people to. It, it's saying, hey, cops are kind of totally, uh, you know, uh, in inadequate uh, to the situation sometimes, and uh, I don't know. Like, like it, yeah, little things like that definitely like rub me the wrong way and like i know there's some you know it's there is some character development for the school shooter kids but they are essentially cartoonishly evil kids and i don't think you're supposed to sympathize with them because they're school shooters or whatever like um but it's it's still like we're still talking about kids shooting kids or something like that you know what I mean? Am I, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I'm trying to like, not, am I, uh, um, I don't know if I'm being too biased here or anything like that, but like, is that, is that, how does that track with you or whatever? Yeah. I don't know. I, I just, uh, it's a weird, it's, it's kind of a, it was a, it was a fine to nothing movie for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just always fascinated with why movies just become, you know, heinous. Right. Right. Uh, and, and why, and, and, and it, it, it's interesting to me because I, you know, in, in preparing for this, you know, I was like, I wonder how, because the, the, the backstory of this movie is very interesting and it's interesting for a few different reasons. And it all kind of circles back to the whole, the premise, but the man who produced this movie is this guy named D- uh, Dallas Sonye and he made bone tomahawk and dragged cost concrete and uh, standoff at Sparrow Creek, the brawl in Cell Block 99. Like, he clearly has a whole thing he's going for. He, all the, is it Craig Zellner? Zoll- Zellner movies? Zoller? Like, Craig Zoller, I think. Zoll- he's done like all his movies and then a bunch of other movies. Like, he, his company uh, is the publisher of Fangoria Magazine. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he has like a real. He has a real feel and that real feel is very like clear in, especially in like the opening scene where she kills a deer, Mm -hmm. she kills a deer, but doesn't quite kill it well enough. So she kind of has to put it out of her, out of its misery. And the way she chooses to do that is by like crushing its head with a rock. And you could tell immediately like, Oh shit, like this is a real tone Mm -hmm. that they're setting in this. So buckle up. Like this is what it's going to be. And he couldn't, he couldn't find distribution for this. And a conservative right-wing website called the Daily Caller that's famous because it was co-founded by Ben Shapiro bought the North American distribution rights. And so they premiered it. They were like, hey, we're going to get into movies that are that follow our viewpoint, Mm-mm. you know, I guess is what he described. He's like, we, we support 
this movie. They didn't make the movie. They just saw it at Venice or it was offered to them or the I think the co-founders struck struck the deal with uh, Sonia mm-hmm. and they produced it. They were initially going to pass. But then once they saw it and everything, they, they decided, hey, this will be our first movie that we want. So if you're subscribed to the Daily Caller website, this is how you would see the movie. It was interesting because I was watching the cast interviews and the two young leads are young people, man. They're younger. They're they're like teenagers, right? They're supposed to be playing high schoolers. And they were just doing kind of behind the scene. And you can find it on YouTube. It's just, you know, it's like a featurette, behind the scenes featurette. And they both talked about, they were like, yeah, I was really scared to do this movie. Like, I was really nervous. Like, I really, I really, I think it's a good movie to do. I think it's interesting. But I, both of them said they had people tell them not to do this and that it'll ruin your career and then blah, blah, blah and all this stuff. I was totally hesitant. I was very, very nervous. Um, and kind of, it was scary. It's it. People are just afraid to, to do this. And I dealt with a little bit of that coming into this. I understand that I'm gonna get some flashback for this, and I accept that. I was just more worried about, uh, you know, is this might, might this ruin my career for years to come? And so I'm fascinated, like they, they're not on, they're both on Instagram. Cause I was like, how are they? I wonder if they're talking about this or whatever. They're getting like harassed or, or anything. They haven't posted really. Mm-hmm. They haven't, both of them, they haven't really posted a lot about it. I don't see a lot of promotion. So they made a movie and then they didn't know who was going to distribute it, but a very right wing website basically took it over as its distributor. And I, I, I don't know how that's kind of affected them. But I can't imagine it's great to be trying to work in Hollywood when your big new movie is being like, you know, distributed by the guy that is getting like fire alarms pulled on him and like Code Pink or is it Code Pink or Operation Pink? Oh, I, I don't even what's know. The, what's the, they basically will go and like uh, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, they'll protest his talks. He'll like have a talk about how he'll have like a debate on campus or give a talk or whatever. And they'll like shut it down. They won't let him let him have mm. it. Like he can't do it at Berkeley. Berkeley like told him you can't come because we can't afford or we don't want to pay for the security that would be necessary to protect you. Mm. Damn. So it's kind of wild, right? So it's like wild stuff like that. So and and this is also they, these are the guys they, they just hired Gina Carano. Gina right. Carano got canceled. So they are gonna they're bringing Gina Carano in so that she's gonna be in some movie or show or something that they're working on, but. It's just kind of interesting, like, I wonder how those kids feel, like, if they'd still go back and make this, knowing that the only way you were going to see this is on this website, uh, well, so, which is a very strange, interesting, kind of, I guess, a new way that things are going to happen. It, d- was this sitting on the shelf for a minute, or, like... Uh, no, because it premiered at Venice. Like, like this uh, year, or this yeah. most recent one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh. So, it's not, like, it's not, like, new, or it, it's new. It's not, like, it hasn't been sitting there and uh, waiting, um, but... It is interesting. It's it's like we just couldn't find. I don't know. The, and the the producer had some credit where he's like, "That's liberal Hollywood for you. They just don't want to talk about this stuff, and they wouldn't, you know, blah blah." So either either they would take it, but not under the pretense or the deal structure that he liked or whatever, or maybe he just got no offers, and that was the best offer. Um, and then Daily Caller was like, "Yeah, we'll snatch it up." But yeah, it's it's. I mean, unfortunately, it's like. Uh it's hard to think of a topic that would be more harder to sell these days. Cause it's kind of one of those things. Like the fact of the matter is like, it's like, Hey, this seems like it's not the right time to release something like this, but then it's never the right time to release something like this. Cause there's always some sort of national tragedy with sh- school shootings and everything like that specifically, or just shootings in general or whatever. But, uh, but I, I, I don't think it should be totally blacklisted or whatever. I, I don't know the specifics. Like I've, I tried to like make a point of like not reading any reviews or seeing, I didn't know this movie existed until you told me about it or whatever. So, um, but it is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, tough one to do um you know it's a it's a risky movie for sure but you know ben shapiro has clearly got his his thing that he's doing so like you know like hey you know fucking you want to put gina carano in a movie do it you know what i mean like i i would say like keep on like if you have like a whole different you know demographic or whatever like 
fucking make it you know what i mean and if you do good movies then like that's the thing is like if the work speaks for itself then then i'll you know have you know like like even if it's not my thing i'll, I'll respect it or whatever but uh, uh-huh. but you know like that's the thing is like uh i think in general there's a lot of things that might slant conservative that tend to f- frankly not be good like which are say i'm thinking more specifically like pure flicks kind of things like that kind of sort of stuff or whatever but but that's also what is that uh, that's like that's uh kind of more of the religious kind of stuff or whatever like you know those kind of hallmark ish kind of movies or whatever is that uh who's the dude uh there's like one guy that's in charge of all of it he does is like the god's not dead guy i think the people that make all of those movies or whatever who who who's the guy he was a child actor and now he's like uh oh, super oh, you're, christian the, the who, step-by-step guy or whatever not, not step-by-step it was it was uh saving christmas what was the movie? that guy no, man i don't know no he was he was a tv star and he became like uh super religious and he makes like uh all like straight to dvd religious movies yeah now. yeah um I, you know who i'm talking I, I know about he did, i, I know he did name. he did like saving christmas or something like that but um but that's its own cottage industry or whatever. And so, but the thing is, like, I hear a lot of people being like, you know, like, oh, hey, why don't they make more movies like this in Hollywood? And the fact of the matter is, unfortunately, most of those movies are bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you're uh, too message focused, sometimes it'll be turn out bad. But, like, um, you know, this, for example, was a movie that I. And once again, it's totally different. It's like totally different subject matter, totally different t- tone and everything like that. But um, I did think, you know, filmmaking wise, it did a pretty OK job. I, I did still I still didn't agree with what it was doing, but I did, uh, you know, like the, it was well done enough. And uh, and they definitely like you could tell they had a low budget. Um, you know, like, you know, most of the, the movie takes place in that cafeteria. Right. So, um, and that's the other thing too, when I was watching it a little bit too, which is kind of begs a whole nother discussion or whatever is people are dumb and somehow still take the worst message away from media sometimes, even if it's like clearly not that. So even though like the bad guys in this are clearly not people to be, you know, idolized or anything like that, um, you know, if you come out with a movie where somebody fucks a pie, there's going to be one dumbass who burns his dick fucking a pie in real life. So that that is one thing, yeah. you know, when they had the shot of, like, the, the car crashing through the cafeteria. And it was weird because it did kind of look like our high school a little bit. Uh, you know, I guess most high, high schools look alike. but I, They probably look pretty close. Yeah, yeah, like, I was definitely like, you know, once again, even though the movie is not encouraging this, I could see someone getting ideas from something like that and it's one of those things where it's like well it's out in the ether now what are you gonna do but you, you get what i'm saying you know like that whole that's yeah, all i hear you i mean moral gray yeah. area for me you know i don't know i yeah but like to me man like the whole well don't make movies because we're worried people it, might right. act like how totally. many you how many joker movies or everything do and yeah. i agree and uh, that kind of like is my issue with a bunch of other stuff too I think like I love movies about shit that I would never want anyone to actually. A hundred percent. That's too. where I want I want that part of people's subconscious. Yeah. Looking into doing that, you know what I mean? Like we watched, uh, you know, Phoenix. Uh, what's his name? Joaquin Phoenix execute a man on live TV on a talk show. Right. You know what I mean? Like people could do that, but like. Well- Todd Phillips isn't worried, like, oh, shit, are people going to execute Conan O'Brien if I make, right. if I put this in the movie? Like, well, I don't so know. I, I've, I've, that was kind yeah. of my beef with the Joker movie a little bit. Is like It felt like it was... It, it's just like when there's things out there that feel like they're kind of... Like like I said, like that was beef I had with Joker, too, but there's like certain things where it's like kind of like, yeah, yeah, like, you know, we're, we're encouraging your anger. Or, you I know? mean, there was a, literally a, uh, a mass shooter that... Dressed, dressed up like the went to the dark night yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And they just keep making them, right? So like, there was a guy who literally took the message of that, and they just go, "Yep, yeah, well, you know, we're gonna just keep doing it." And it's like everyone loves the Dark Knight, everyone loves Joker, everyone loves the Batman, everyone loves no, no. So I just I don't know, well, I but I, I I totally agree, and I, I think it's like one of those things where it's like now now it's not just like an issue of like just this movie. We're talking about like the state of movies as a whole. But but to bring mm-hmm. up something, you know, I, I think I had talked about on a previous podcast, like, you know, I had seen a movie 
that I kind of liked called The Hunt that came out last year mm-hmm. that, that was very controver- controversial and kind of offensive. And um, and it's I, I totally understand why it would be uh, to people. But like I think um, the one thing with that for me was it's such a ridiculous premise that like, you know, you know, you can't take it as seriously. Like, that's my whole thing is like Die Hard in a high school works if like the people holding up the high school are robots or aliens or something. You know what I mean? Like I need some sort of extra layer of fantasy separation. Mm -hmm. Cause like, you know, the the whole thing is like, okay, yeah, if it was in a high school, I'd crawl through the air vents. I would check for, you know, weapons here and everything like that. But like now you're bringing it into this very real world situation, which many people have had to deal with and everything like that. So then it suddenly kind of goes into this whole greater conversation that is like, much harder to parse you know um yeah like how would you feel if they made a columbine movie like we're gonna make a movie about columbine we're gonna we're gonna the whole movie is about the columbine killers and we're gonna reenact exactly what they did i mean they basically did that with elephant a little bit like you know maybe not beat by beat and that's like one thing i kind of kept on why I kept on thinking of that a little bit. Because uh, there, there mm-hmm. was a few Columbine-ish movies that have come out since Columbine. And uh, and even if it's not explicitly Columbine, there's a few, like, like uh, say, like, we need to talk about Kevin or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, like, clearly influenced by it. And uh, the one thing with those is it's, like, with Elephant, it's, it's more, like, it definitely firmly roots you in this, like, oh, hey what's it like to be stuck in the middle of a horrible event like this? And it kind of shows, it establishes all the lives of the people. And uh, the big difference between them is it doesn't go into this diehard scenario. And that kind of begs the question, like, yes, I do think, you know, it's, if you have trained yourself to, with self-defense and everything like that, it's not bad to know how to get yourself out of a situation like that. And it's not bad to, uh, like say, hey, it's it's okay to defend yourself, but there is like little subtle hints in this movie where it feels like, uh, like for instance, the the police are coded as just like very impotent and like unable to do, mm-hmm. uh, you know, take care of the situation. Like the uh, the school guard. We didn't have one when we were in school. We didn't have one, but I think in oh in today's age, every, every school. at least every public school, yeah. yeah has probably a head of security or something like a rent a cop that's walking yeah, around. Yeah. We didn't have any of that shit. Yeah, but um but yeah, I mean that's like a staple of many schools today. And then they have the whole scene where it's like the big bad kid talks to his guidance counselor and talks about how you never thought I would make anything yeah, of you, myself, you Mr. Johnson, and, and yeah, everything yeah. like that. Right. So that's the sort of stuff. That's the part I found most grating about the movie is like things like that that are things that are just like boilerplate like diehard dialogue you know what i mean like that's why i kept on saying he's Mm -hmm. like hans gruber but i if you're going to go in a subject that is this clearly like a hot topic issue in the real world then i need something more than than hans basically um i do you think that people hate this because the message of the movie is guns and training equal safety and that you're basically nothing without those things and you're just another you know you're just another scared powerless person curled up on the floor or is it is is it like taking action is bad no if you can't like what what do you like i'm I'm trying to get to the core of like people's absolute hate well no i get you and see that's the thing is like same thing like i there's tons of people out there that like know how to handle themselves and like firearms and all that other sort of stuff. And I, I mm-hmm. have total respect for those people and everything like that. But when you have a movie like this, especially if you're like a high schooler, say you're a high schooler, you see it, watch this movie and you're in this sort of situation. Like I would be more likely to maybe do something stupid that might, uh, escalate the situation. You know what I mean? I might be like, oh, mm-hmm. hey, I can be like this chick in this movie. Boom, shot in the head. You know what I mean? Like, it's... it's right. So that's the one thing. And it does... Uh, once again, like, I don't know if I'm looking into this too much, but it does feel like you have... Sometimes you have movies like this that could, like, inspire a little bit of that vigilante justice thing. And once mm-hmm. again, like, I, I get it. Like, you know, school shooters is, like, a real serious subject um i'm not 
very sympathetic for many of them, even though I know they're kids and they need to have, met- if they have mental issues, they need to have these talked out and they need to be stopped beforehand and everything like that. But like, yeah, the, the, the whole idea that it's, it's basically because the law is impudent, you might need to, you, like, there's a lot of that. And even though I feel like the main character or actress is pretty well written and it like, yeah, the main actress does a really great job with her and everything like that. She is kind of that. She never does anything wrong. Her only character flaw is she's too dedicated and can't let go of her mom. So like, that's the thing is it's very, it is a little didactic. It's not like too much. Like they, they do a good enough job kind of getting you into the plot, but they do slip in little lines of like, you know, like little things like, you know, Oh, you're too busy being triggered to think about all of the the people that you killed and so you know they bring up some cogent points but they uh Mm -hmm. definitely little things like that definitely irked me uh uh when i was watching it a little bit but like i said i was expecting to totally hate this movie and i i didn't you know i there were things about it more on the technical side but i i did find it was a more solid piece of work than i was expecting yeah, because I, I, I think that's what I, I'm always trying to get to the bottom of, of like, we watch movies based on the reviews, and I feel like that's most of people because we're there's so much content that we're forced to kind of like use services to help filter out what is worth our time because time is the most valuable thing we have in life, right? Yeah. So like when, when, when a movie has a horrible review, like a score, like a Rotten Tomato score is, is just horrible – it just means don't waste your time on this movie. Right. But like, I, I am always like interested in how like offensive to me equals bad. Don't watch. Right. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, well, just is the, is it technically product wise bad? Did you not enjoy it? Like I'm always interested, but I feel like how many movies kind of fall through the cracks of these systems where we just don't really even explore them because we've, let someone else tell us not to watch them or don't waste your time or don't be challenged by this or whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, that is definitely something to consider and it's, it's hard to say because I feel like that develops in critic circles, no matter what, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's even if you're not all gathering in the same spot and everything like that, I feel like there, it, it's just weird. Sometimes it's like a timing thing. Like, you know, like, for instance, like, th- whatever's going on in the world might not gel with whatever the filmmaker had in his mind when he started production, and then by the time the movie gets released, uh, it, it just really isn't the right time or place, and then sometimes those movies get discovered, like, decades later and revisited and thought of as masterpieces and stuff like that. So it's very weird. Like, you know, it's the whole thing where, you know, culture is very fickle and kind of... S- the circular cyclical or whatever so Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's hard to say it's uh it's it's every every movie is like a snowflake so so uh and it is there are countless ones that have not seen the light of day for one reason or another so all right well what do you think would you give it a thumbs up thumbs down do not see it or do see it i mean i would say if you know like what to expect by a gratuitous diehard in a high school. If you, you probably know if you're into that or not, it's, it's, it's not schlocky, but it is, it does, it is pretty much what you would expect. So, uh, so yeah, that's basically, if, if that's your jam, then uh, you will probably like this. And if it's not, then don't go see it. <laughs> I would say. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel the same way where if you if you know those producers and their past work and you're kind of comfortable with that subject matter, I think it's worth your time. I don't think it's a well I don't think it's a bad movie. I don't think it's poorly made. I think it was well acted. Um, yeah, it's weird, controversial content, but I don't think that equals bad. And I just don't like to see things just be labeled as bad because they're kind of uncomfortable or whatever. But I, so many of the reviews that I read, we're like, this is horrible. This is uncomfortable, but it's bad. Like, it's technically bad. Don't see it. It's not like, and I, I was like, that's just not to the credit of the product. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I would say if you have the capacity, give it a shot because it's just a, it's a movie that's being, you're being told is absolute dog shit and it's just not. And I, I, that is the 
I, I feel like I'm defending this thing when I really don't care. But it's really just like a, it's a system that I don't agree with. Right. So if you're not if you're not really if you're not really comfortable with that system, just kind of just the the myopic, you know, kind of group think that says this is bad because you don't like Ben Shapiro or you, or you don't like the producers. I don't know, man. Like, it's just a piece of art. You know what I mean? To me, like, give it a shot. I, I encourage almost everyone to watch everything except that piece of shit 2067 on Hulu. Mm, or Willy's Wonderland. Uh, Don't see that. Or Willy's Wonderland. Uh, but anyway, there you go. So I think it's worth your time. I th- it's, it's an interesting movie. I like to see a cool, strong, independent female out there just killing people. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. She, she so, was a good... Uh, good. She was out there getting it. 